down. Kane! It's 1-0. Down. 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 13th in the championship. The takeover happened, as I said it would. People will be... Oh, when, when have we got leads? Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Joe Football Show. I'm just smiling at all them lovely comments. Everyone absolutely bouncing uh, that we're uh, ready to go live. Listen, there's already 400 or was 400 people in the chat just waiting for us to come live, which is absolutely amazing. So thank you all for your continued support. Please do smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in, and of course, hit that notification bell. Tonight, we're going to be talking about uh, prospective new goalkeeper, Carl Darlow, uh, the exit of Ilya Melier, where will he go? Who will he go to? How much will we get for him? And we're going to be talking about which is the next position that Leeds United need to lock down. And it's brought to you, of course, by your late night Leeds crew. Just to give everyone sort of a status update, if you like, the late night Leeds crew will consist of myself, Andrea, Lockie and Lloyd. And then obviously the final world crew will have their space. And obviously there might be some interchange between the two, but I do like having uh, late night videos because uh, I know people from across the pond, etc., can view it. And I've, I've yeah, got a little nice little space for them. So uh, without further ado, let's bring in everyone's favourite Italian, Mr. Andrea Russo. Andrea, how are you, my man? Great, mate. Uh, thank you for, for the invitation again for the, and being a part of the crew now. Yes. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're part of a crew right now. So, yes. yeah, Love I just it. wanted, uh, like, like I, I said to you, you've seen the flags of Italy and Greece uh, behind me. So before we start, I wanted to send a message of support to my fellow countrymen affected by the floods and the thunderstorm in Lombardy and the fires in Sicily and to our Greek brothers by the fires in the island, island of Rhodes and Corfu. Uh, stay strong for Italia and Pame e Lada. There you go. Great. So thank you so much for that, mate. And, and like you say, all thoughts go out to those that are suffering at this time. Uh, we've got Lockie up next, my Halifax brethren. How are you, my man? Good? <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I second what Andrea says as well on, on the respects to the people that are suffering. Um, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm good. Yeah. Yeah, good, good. Uh, I just want to say as well, a lot of love uh, for Andrea. Um, and thank you, thank you. Not, not always, bro. And there's been a bit of a clown in some of my comments, uh, <coughs> making a point of saying, oh, can anyone understand the Italian? Which, which to be honest, rubbed me up the wrong way. But it's quite clearly that Andrea is well loved within the Leeds United content creation sphere. So that one person who's no doubt watching this, if you don't like it, Go watch something else, my man. Okay, that's all I'll say to you. Big up to Andrea. Yeah, no, no right. worries, no worries. No worries, brother. Uh, and last but no worries, certainly not least, and the, the latest edition, I guess you could say, is, of course, everyone's favourite Brummy, even though he's from uh, <laughs> Brighton. <laughs> <laughs> is, of course, Lloyd. Lloyd, how you doing, my man? All right? Yeah, all good. Thank you, mate. Thanks for having me on again. Appreciate always, it. Always, always, mate. You've just come from footy training, haven't you? How did you get on? I'm oh, still panting, mate. I haven't kicked the ball since February, literally. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Where do you play? Uh, left back or like left wing. Nice, yeah. nice. If anyone's listening. Sign him up. Sign him up. <laughs> Sign him up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mate, I used to be a left back when I was younger, but I mean, it was because it was the position nobody wanted. I mean, yeah. Right. E my, I used to play for South Farham Colts. Do you know him? Do you know South? I know Farham? South Farham. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you will do. <laughs> South Farham Colts and uh, St Columbus as well. And uh, I once played nice. for my district. I played for Calderdale. Uh, oh yeah, nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. We played Halifax, nice. but that's nice that's as far as it went. There. Eh? <laughs> nice little CV you got going. Oh on no, there. that's <laughs> as far as it went. Bro. It's as far as it went. Left back, brutal. Right foot and left back, man. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> right. Okay. Um. Let's get stuck straight into it then. Without um. I mean, counting your chickens before they've hatched and all that, but I do think Cal Darlow is going to be done now. Um, I'm quite surprised, actually, because I thought he was set for Bournemouth and uh, I was very much of the thinking, well, if he wants to choose Bournemouth and choose to go sit on a bench somewhere, then crack on. But it turns out he's had an about face. He's not going to Bournemouth. They've just signed Radu, so that's definitely off the table. The only club at the table was, of course, Leeds United. Much like Nat Phillips going Kamara. These seem to have been milling in the background for some time and it looks like Leeds United are waiting for sort of like dominoes to fall before they bring them in, I think. Um, but yeah, Carl Darlow is one that was mentioned right at the start by Phil and it looks like it'll be done. Um, just to give my two pen on it, 
because I've seen a lot of them. Um, it's mad. It's mad, honestly, because it's like someone genuinely said to me, um, I'd rather... <sighs> I'd rather give Robles a go. Now, no disrespect to Robles. Like to say that to say Caldalo isn't good enough, I'd rather give Robles a go. Them two things cannot go in the same sentence for me because Robles is rubbish. His C V tells you he's rubbish. And that I'm sorry to to be so scathing, but I don't think he's a number one goalkeeper personally. Um Okay, came in when Melia were doing poor, but I think Cal Dalo is an astute signing. Um it depends how much the fee is. There was a lot of talk of six, but then I read a tweet from Alex Crook that said Bournemouth would not be paying anywhere close to that. So it makes you think that actually it might not be anywhere close to six. So let's wait and see before we get stressed over that. Because I suppose if you think Ampadu was seven, Cal Dalo six, it is a little bit like, oof, that one seems a bit pricey for a third choice keeper. But all in all, in terms of in terms of Cal Dalo, he's what we need right now. I think, and I think he'll come in experienced head, uh, marshal the back line, and he's actually, uh, contrary to popular belief, he's actually good with his feet, and I think he'll be well suited mm -hmm. to, to Daniel Farker football. So that's my thoughts on it. It's a massive plus for me. Uh, Andrea, thoughts on uh, on Caldalo, Mama? Yeah, I think you're bang on here because, like you said, there's this uh, conception of him not being good with his feet, but he is good with his feet. Yeah, you just have to look at the stats that the majority of those touches that he has throughout the game are short passes. And if you look at the system of Farke, especially making a comparison when, when it was at Norwich, we usually had a tall goalkeeper who was good with his feet in short passes because there's very few long balls from the back because uh, it's a possession-based possession football. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've seen also Loki, um, or Loki tweet, you know, when he compared the two, uh, goalkeepers Woodman and and Dalo with the, the references, you know, these, uh, these are both good. But especially if you look at Dalo, the short passes stand out for me, and it's exactly what we need because we had in the last two, in the last two seasons, especially Melier and uh, and Kiko too, who weren't good in terms of distribution. Distribution doesn't necessarily mean long balls; it means also short passes, and I think Dalo is good with that. But if you look, when you remember when we did our scouting report about the keepers and we talked about Darlo, the first scouting report we ever did, we outlined that Darlo, in terms of long balls, the only long balls that he, um, when he uses that, that specific part of his play, he uses that specifically to send the ball to the wingers. So it's, it, the majority of, of those passes are, are, are to the center, center backs and the left full box. But when he, he does long balls, he does them to the to the wingers, and we know that the wingers usually attack attack and cover some a certain amount of space in the opposition uh, half, you know, uh, during the system of FAC. So it's absolutely possible for me too, and uh, especially I think uh, it brings the experience. Is a is a player that has already played and won in the championship with Newcastle, but also has tons of caps under Nottingham Forest when he was there in the championship. It is done well with Alf City when he was uh, in the championship recently. And I was also considering the fact that he's eligible for the net, well, for Wales too, because his grandfather was a Welsh international. And he refused to play for Wales when he had the opportunity back then. But right now, they don't have a proper consistent goalkeeper. They just have the usual ones, you know, Hennessy and Ward. So I think if he has a good season, mm -hmm. he can be considered for Wales too, because of course, the England squad at the time he, he, he refused because he, he wanted to to battle for an England place, you know, when they were in the Premier League and he was starting uh, for uh, for Newcastle. But right now he can also consider to play for Wales too if he plays mm -hmm. well. There's also the, the the Welsh connection, you know, Darlo, Ampadu, and uh, and James right now. Yeah. So absolutely yeah. yes for me, massive yes. Yeah, I agree with all all points made, mate. And uh, I'm just, do you know what, Lockie? I'm I'm looking forward to a bit of experience back there as well, mm -hmm. and I think. Seasons gone by. This is a this is a signing, and Leeds fans probably don't want to hear it right now because they feel underwhelmed. But this is a signing that there are say a promotion winning team makes for their goalie. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I believe anyway. They look at it and they say, Do you know what? He's won the championship before. He's coming in. I think, yeah, it, it just makes sense to me. I think. Yeah. Just I think makes sense. one thing, yeah, it stands out, doesn't it? Yeah, it's not it's not pretty. It's not an Ampadu type player, but mm. realistically. 
thinking of names, who really is a standout who keeper? Is, uh, yeah. yeah. I really like Angus Gunn personally. I thought he was harshly dropped last year. He was one of the best performing, statistically, the best performing goalkeepers in the league. But Dalo was up there. His save percentage is one of the best in the league, which, you know, in a team that probably won't have as much shots as Hull, I think it's fair to say. Mm -hmm. You know, having a high save percentage is vital. Elon Melias was one of the worst in the country last year. So having that, you know, well, I can't say the word stability. There we go. It's important. And of course, like Andrea said, you have to be able to play with your feet. I think there's a difference between being like a, a natural ball playing goalkeeper, you know, like your Edisons, your Stefans, those type players, as yeah. opposed to a guy who can use his feet. And he's one of them. He can use them. He's not, look, he's not going to be world class central midfielder, do you know what I mean? But he can use the ball. You know, he can pass it to players he needs to. He's, that's why we're getting him in. You know, Daniel Farker will have identified him, clearly wants him. Uh, the club actually said, didn't they, that they were confident it was always going to happen, even though the talks with Bournemouth, they still thought yeah. there was a way in there. Yeah. Yeah. So they've, they've waited and they've stuck to it. So they clearly want him. Um, so I'm all right with that. You talk about his experience. Having an experienced goalkeeper in this league is vital, I think, yeah. personally. Yeah. Obviously, we got up with Elan Millier, but in that, we had a really good team that league, didn't we? We didn't win that yeah. because of him. We won that because of the incredible players we had. Obviously, it was part of that. Um, but yeah, it, it's, look, it's not. It's not New Bell. It's not these glorious yeah. names, but mm -hmm. it's a really solid option. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's fair. Uh, yeah, there is. Listen, over nine hundred people in the house. Please do smash a like on the video. It's amazing to see. Thank you. Yeah, I am. I am really surprised, um, uh, Lloyd, at the the definite what seems like a split in the fan base, bro. Between he's actually not good enough. Why are we getting him? There's better out there. And then us. It seems like on this panel who we're all going, do you know what? It's a smart sign and it yeah. makes sense. Get it done. Yeah, I, I think it's a like just a real solid and decent signing. Like it's not like a glamour signing, but it's yeah. just what we need. And for those people who sort of, you know, and obviously everyone's entitled to their opinion, but like I just I just wonder like who who would you have expected us to sign? Like for me, mm. he, he's someone who was attainable and at the higher sort of echelon of people that we could realistically get so I think it's a smart signing for me yeah. and it's, it's going back to what Lockie said the other day it's four from four from the 49ers Farka, Hammond, Ampadu, now Dala I think that's a real like solid start to their regime yeah yeah I think it's a it's a great signing and he, he obviously um comes in and um comes in and gets uh gets the number one spot for me um, I also just saw Joe, real quick sorry yeah, people saying why wouldn't he sign for Bournemouth well that's Obviously, based on the fact that he doesn't want to be second or third choice exactly. in a Premier League yeah. side, uh, and uh, he's like done Andres, that, hasn't he? He's yeah, done he's done that. He's, he's, you also, you want, he might yeah, want to get yeah. in that Wales squad, like Andre said. That might be a goal as well. I mean, he's thirty-two, so he's sort of yeah. coming towards the end of his career. He's probably just thinking, yeah. "I've had enough of sitting on the bench." And it's good to see yeah. because he, he's a, he's a real decent keeper. So it would just be like a massive waste of a career just to yeah. watch it tick by on the bench. But you exactly. see, like the the, the proper yeah. the propaganda around that video when he comes sliding out for the ball. And he slides out of the box and then they score. But what goalkeeper doesn't make mistakes? Like, they all do. Exactly. All exactly. of them. Like, exactly. Basically, I'm... Lloyd, you could go away tonight, right? And you could make Melier look like a world beater. I could also go away tonight and make him look like a clown. Yeah. That's yeah. the facts. It's easy with the, with compilations. Especially bro. with a goalkeeper, because obviously their mistakes yeah. are highlighted. You know, 100%. More, more yeah. important, and, uh... so... Look and, at David De Gea, for example. Sorry, yeah. Andrew. David De Gea, over the past decade, has been one of the best goalkeepers to grace the Premier League. Yes, yeah. the, the game's gone on now. I understand it. And people all of a sudden think he's a clown. He's not. He's a good goalkeeper. It's just he's not suited to the style that Ten Hag wants to play. But that's what I'm saying. It comes back to... It's, it's a similar sort of vibe. Sorry, Andre. Go on, mate. No, no, no worries, Joe, at all. Uh, also, to, to add to what you said, also, Karius, he made those two mistakes... In the, yeah. in the Champions League final, and uh, it's been frozen out uh, from from every club basically right now, and is uh, destined to be a third choice again. You know, at, at Newcastle, yeah. But I just wanted to say about Dalo. You know, what uh, adding to what Lloyd and Lucky said. Also, there's this conception to me that some of our fans still think that we are a Premier League club. Yes. But yes. What, what they say is, let us get back to the Premier League. Dalo is a great mm -hmm. goalkeeper for the champ for the Championship. If we get promoted, then we should consider if he's a top, a, a first choice for the Premier League, or, or if we need to bring in another goalkeeper. But first of all, we need to change our mindset and realize that we are in the Championship. We need Championship yeah. experience player, 
uh, of course, if we get Premier League players like Ampadu, great, yes. <laughs> over the moon. But uh, also Dal, of course, has experience in the Premier League. But first of all, we need to get back there to, to think yes. like a Premier League club for me. It's the same mm. as what people were signing when we got Farker, wasn't it? Good at yeah. getting out of yeah. championship, but because yeah, you yeah. got Norwich relegated, it's like, well, yeah. we need to get back there before we worry about about staying there again. Yeah, exactly. It's a long and way think, away, you know. I think we need to remember as well that Cal Dalo started for Newcastle in the Premier League as well. Yeah. I just want to say what Jack said there as well. Is Dalo a a Farka style goalkeeper? I'd say yes, just based on the fact that we've been patient with him. You know, clearly when I I thought he went to Bournemouth, I thought that had done, but obviously not. Yeah, Um, same here. I think we all been the patience shows to me that he clearly wants him. So I'd say yes to Jack on that one. Yeah, yeah. And similar to Clue in certain certain points. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's been a general misconception that he's poor with his feet because, like you say, the odd clip. Like even in pre season the other day. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, all of that. yeah, yeah. I think he plays a ball out to Bruno Guimaraes, and 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 then all of a sudden everyone's going, "Oh, he's rubbish!" But it's pre-season; these things happen, right? I mean, Klassen did it about fifteen times against <laughs> Manchester United, and so you know, it swings and roundabouts. Big up Gabe, um, always on one leads on the debrief. Big up to Gabe. He says, "Keep hearing there's better out there on Twitter." But no one ever says who. And if they do, they're not coming to the championship really hitting. Reality hitting. Well, bro, this is the thing. That's why I put that tweet out earlier on to say those that thingy, then who were you expecting? Like genuinely. And I think a few people mentioned goalkeepers that were already linked to. Uh Johansson and another. And I said, Yeah, but the club have opted for Darlow. That should tell you all you need to know in that respect. There wasn't really any names outside of that. Do you know what I mean? Um, New Bell obviously won, but he's gone to been number one at Stuttgart in the in, in the Bundesliga. Like, what, we can't really compete, I don't yeah. think, can we? Let's be honest. Um, but big up to Gabe. Thank you for supporting, as always. Um, mate. Right, so obviously, there's a lot of love from Newcastle fans. There's a lot of love from Hull fans. They won't tell you now, obviously. I've seen your, your message, MC. But, uh, yeah, um, I think he got their player of the month and that. I've seen a few videos doing the rounds of uh, Hull's Twitter when he won that award. But, um what does that mean for Melier now, right? Because this is what I want to talk about. Because I think m- myself, I've always banged the drum. I've always said that he'll go on to be a top goalkeeper. I've always said he'll go on to win things. I genuinely believed that once upon a time. And I'm not I'm not saying that he can't refine that form for me because I do think there's a great goalkeeper in there. Um, but I am quite surprised. And I think probably the club are surprised as well at the lack or the lack of interest in him it would seem because as soon as he went on pre-season his agent's coming out and Melier's doing interviews on about yeah I wouldn't mind going to Chelsea but I'd have to be number one and it's like what what what's going on here Melier? do you know what I mean why have you got the balls to even come out and say that really because you ain't going to be the number one at Chelsea like I, I don't know where it came from so I think even his camp probably felt that they would have more interest. Um, what's clear now, Andrea, is that now that we are bringing Darlow in, that's the, the final nail in his coffin from the club saying, look, you need to move on because we're bringing in someone else now. So, like, what do we think is going to happen with him, Andrea? Where do you see him moving? What kind of figure do you think we can get for him? Because once upon a time, I'd have said, like, 25 million keepers are a premium, but now... It's looking a bit bleak on that respect. Yeah, of course, the contest is important. Uh, he had a good value when he had a good season. Then his value dropped massively when he kept making mistakes. And uh, of course, this season was terrible. Didn't save a, a huge amount of shots consecutively. And especially, I think that they spoke before the, Euro, the under-21 Euros because they were convinced he, he will have played for France, we were, we were, which were one of the favorites to win it, you know. So um, it, it was going to be the start, I think, in the in the minds of our, of, of his camp, you know, of his of his agent, and uh, he didn't. So he didn't really help in terms of his value. He looked like a um, attitude, uh, uh, like he had an attitude, you know, uh, speaking before he under twenty one euros and saying he was interested in going to Chelsea op- in, only if he, he was going to be the number one, you know. But now we are at a crossroads because he, he, hadn't, he hadn't played, um, of course, at the end 21 euros and uh, he had a terrible season. So the value has massively dropped. And uh, I don't think we'll get near uh, 25 millions, you know, 25 million pounds right now. So we're at a crossroads. Or either we loan him out and we try to recoup something at the end of the season if he gets back and play and has a good season. But it's also a risk because if he 
of course, uh, we've seen with the other players that the wages are fully paid. If he has an on clause, this is important uh, by the acquiring club. But uh, it also risk, like I said, because if he, if he doesn't play well, the value is going to drop again. So we'll have to to sell him at uh, a a lower with a lower fee, you know. And of course, the other option is selling him now. But of course, it's a a lower fee, not 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 twenty five millions for sure. I think he is around 10, 12, 12 millions right now in terms of value. Maybe I'm I'm too low in the, with this prediction, but realistically for me, is the 10, 12 million pounds right now, and uh, for sure he needs to move on. He's not staying as a as a as a backup, of course, and uh, we're at crossroads. And uh, honestly, for me, I will try to to loan him out if there's the opportunity, but I won't rule out too, uh, considering that in France there's rumors about Lafon leaving Nantes. Uh, maybe Nantes will be interested in him, but uh, I don't think right now that there's a club that will try to sign him permanently, you know, because he had a bad season and he didn't play with the under-21. So maybe in that kind of situation, I see more like going out on loan because the club wants to see if he's good, if he plays well, then maybe after one season he goes back to us. And that club, if he has played well, knocks on our door and try to acquire him on a permanent, you know. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. And, and the interesting thing is, if Melier does go out on loan, you can imagine it's not going to be uh, to an English club, which means that would take up one of the final loan spots that we've got. Yeah. I think maybe that's why Leeds United might be tr- pushing for a permanent on Vorba. So that one of them loan spots doesn't get taken up. Does that make sense? Because it mm. it did say that they were potentially looking at a, a permanent deal for 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 Volber. So that's what might be holding that one up. But we do expect him to leave. But yeah, on Melier, and um, I, I, Lloyd, I have a little bit of regret me because I proper rated him, and I and I. I, I actually really enjoyed Melier. I'll never forget his debut when he came on against that. Well, he started against Arsenal in the yeah, FA yeah. Cup and was just spraying it, balls right out, center. weren't he? Yeah. And it was like, who is this kid? And then obviously Kiko happened and thankfully Melier was ready. Um, so, yeah, I have a little pang of regret about Melier, to be honest, that it, that it went so bad. And I feel that, and I think this is the same with all of them, because of how bad it went under Jesse. And then from then it just got worse. That no one really cares anymore, and I feel a bit sad about that because I really cared about Melier once upon a time. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you there. Like our first year in the Prem and obviously the yeah. promotion season, like, he was one of my favourite players, and um, I'm a bit uh, gutted with the way it sort of panned out for him because a bit of devil's advocate, like as many as mistakes he made, and I know it's like important for the defenders to trust the goalkeeper, but that also works both ways. And our defence has just been horrific. So, I don't know, maybe maybe in a team with a better back line, he, he may have yes. been more confident and we, we might have seen more out of him. So, like what Andrea says, out of all the people we've loaned out, I would have rather any of them have been Meslier because I think one day he will be like a 40, 50 million pound goalkeeper um, with age and experience. So, I personally, I hope that we could loan him out. I mean, I know we've got to raise some funds from somewhere, but I'd rather it have been from any of those than than Mesley because I still still hold on to the fact that I think one day he will be like a really like top class goalkeeper. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Just before I come uh, to to you, Lockie, um, it turns out actually because you know I was mentioning about Alex Crook um, getting. Um, you know, saying that Bournemouth, if they were going to sign Darlow, it'd be next to, well, it w- it won't be for a fee. Um, it looks like Leeds United are going to pay less than two million, to be honest, because uh, wow. yeah, nice. Keith Keith Downey's just tweeted out uh, from Sky Sports, so he was asked the question by a Newcastle fan: if the fee is in the millions, we've done unreal business, and he says it's not in the millions, um, so huh. it might not even be a million yet. Do you know what I mean? So, so I think that's that's really great news in it. What's your thoughts on that, um, Lockie? I'll ask you that first of all to get in for. Well, I don't know what that. If it's in the millions, does that mean it's a million or two millions? But ultimately, it's cheap. That's what we're going to say. It's cheap, right? 
it sounds like it, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, even more incentive to go and do it. That's hardly going to yeah. dent into your, your budget, really, is it? If uh -huh. Less than a million or two million, that's nothing, really. No. You know, anyone in the championship can do that. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> I think that's a yeah. no-brainer. Yeah, uh, on on uh, on on Elan. For me, and this is I agree with Lloyd and on obviously what Andrea said as well. It's a massive disappointment for what happened because that first season in Bielsa, the two players I loved were Strauch and Melia, the two young guys really performing above their level for their age, and they're the two that have gone down the most for me. Which is disappointing because both of them showed real potential and growth. And we were yeah. both saying, end of that first season, we were going, these are worth 30, 40, 50 million, these two. Now, you wouldn't say that, would you? And that, it hurts because, yeah, I, I still I still believe he's, he's a really good keeper and they don't just disappear. He's still no. clearly got that. He's just going through a difficult period as a goalkeeper. You know, some of the saves just went under his hand. He'd never do that. Well, you know, one on one, though. One on one, he's. Uh, oh, when yeah, he spreads man. himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One yeah. on one. I'm but running like, attack to one on one. Still great. I remember like the first year in the Premier League, even getting down down to his bottom corners, he was brilliant. The save didn't yeah. tip round the corner. They all yeah. just went under his hand this time. Yeah. Uh, that's you know that he needs to find himself. And if that's a move away, fine. But like I said, I still believe in that potential. So if it is alone and he has a really good season, you know, you're pay, you know, the team are playing hundred percent of the loan fees, you're getting you're yeah. recouping the money there. And then he has a good season in any club. His value will shoot right back up just because of how yeah. young he still is. So, yeah, do you sell him for 10 to 12 million, which is probably about right. Like Andrea said, I think it's not going to be much mm. more than that based on his last year and a half. But do you loan him, take that risk that he'll have a good year and he could be double? Yeah. 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 No, but I, I, think, I think it's been on the cards for a while. I, think, I don't think he wants to play second division again. No. He wants to get his place in France back. He wants to play top tier. Yeah, uh, it's not going to be second, not a chance. And and if we're realistic, if he goes out, so we had him on loan at first, right, from Lorient, and then made it permanent for yeah. five million, right? Five million. If you think his first season with us, like when he broke in, and then the Premier League, if he goes out on loan and has a similar season somewhere else, let's say he goes to to was it Ren? You mentioned Lafont going from was it uh, Nantes? Nantes, right? Nantes. Okay. Yeah. Um, if if he went there and had a similar sort of season. Then, then we can command a big fee for him. Do you know what I mean? So it might That's be it. smart to. He still to, has that ceiling, doesn't one. it? Because yeah. he's, so, he's still so young. He's yeah, and also, young. also, not, not uh, I, 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 of course, they played in Europe last season, but they didn't do well in, in Ligue 1. So they, they'll try to, to rebuild the squad, you know. So it could be a good option for him going, going out on loan there if Lafont gets sold, you know, by, by Le Canary, uh, yeah. by them, you know. So are, are we. Oh, listen. For me, second keeper don't mean shit because you just hope that a goalkeeper can stay fit <laughs> for 46 games, ultimately. Yeah. Um, but are we all right with class? Like, I'm not... Obviously, I don't want to see him. I don't want to see Van der Hoeville, but we're all right with him because there's a lot of people going, keep him, have him competing for number one and all this sort of stuff. And you just don't convince Darlo to come in and you don't convince Melier to go for that either, unfortunately. Melier is going to leave for me. Um, are you happy with, with either of them um, being being back up? Yeah, Darlo number one, class and back up. I'm, I'm all right with that. The, if we do loan out Melier, his his wages will cover the fee by the sounds of it that we're paying for Darlo. Yeah. So it makes sense business-wise. Yeah, I'm all right yeah. with that, I think. I, yeah. I agree, yeah. There's also, I like uh, Daryl on bang from the youth side. Mm. Very good goalkeeper. Keep an eye on him in the next three or four years. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I heard m mad things about it. Was that Farsley, right? Was it Farsley? Was it Bradford? Bradford, Bradford City, there, sorry. Yeah, yeah. 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 Back. yeah, England. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So He's one to watch for the future as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, as, sec as a second, yeah. Like hopefully Dallas stays fit and he plays every second. That's the hope, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. I, 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 thought, I thought Klaus needed alone, to be fair, and to be the, the number one maybe in... Uh, Top League One team to get experience in in a senior soil, but uh, uh, twenty uh, similar age to Mesley, are he? He's not. I don't think he's. Yeah, exactly. yeah, no, because we looked at we looked at class and before we signed Mesley all the way back when twenty two, twenty two, right. same age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I was more more inclined to see him leave uh, on loan to get experience, maybe like what what uh, in a similar situation as the Scandinavian, you know. What for that point is Dalberg, you know, and he went on loan to Doncaster and Gillingham, I think it was. 
So I would have like for for Christian career to go out on loan and play as the starter maybe in a League One club, a uh, top League One club maybe because he's an under twenty one international for Norway. But yeah, right now I don't see him leaving honestly because we invested in another goalkeeper. I, I I if I were them of course, but I'm not them of course. I would have bring brought in another experienced goalkeeper as a backup, like we did with the Robles, for example, last season. So, you see, uh, another example is like the Saints that broke, which brought in Caballero last season as a, as a backup and as a, uh, as a, a teacher, <laughs> let's say that. Yeah, coach. Uh, in training, you know, like a coach, you know, for, yeah. for them, uh, for, the, for the younger keepers, you know, like Mazzuno and, uh, and, and the more experienced McCarthy, you know, or something mm. like this, that. This, we still might bring another one in, you know, at the end of the window, it might be, you know. And the yeah, loner again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> um, before we before we move on, Hisham Hassani says we won the league with Car- Kiko, so Darlo is an absolute upgrade here. I wonder if Melier could stay for a year and work with Darlo and become number one again next year. I don't, I don't oh. think either of them sign up for that Hisham, and uh, I think Melier needs pastures new, and I, I, I'm more than happy to give Darlo his opportunity, man. And let's not forget, people he did. Have a season in the Premier League with Newcastle and did really well. Um, so don't just write him off just yet. I think he's a, a good solid signing. Big up to my man Alex, who I haven't seen for a bit. Shoulders for days. Uh, he says, What's up, Joe? I've been missing out lately, but he is a small donation for always putting out great content. Much love, brother. Much love to you as well. Thanks, everyone, for watching over the last 24 to 48 hours. Um, cool. Right. So I did a poll earlier on. Um, I was sat with the kids while they were running about the play area and I thought oh, I'm a bit bored here. Let's 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 stick a let's stick a poll out. And um yeah Should've so I'll play up. area Joe. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately bro <laughs> as you get older you get less fit and I'll run about for a bit and I'm sweating my tits off and I'm like <laughs> see, this isn't a good look. This isn't a good look. <laughs> you see Parag Parag thinks thinks about contract in his sleep. Joe thinks about polls in his sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um I put out this poll. Um so now that Leeds have secured that goalkeeper, which signing do you think is most important next? I'll just share with uh, the results what people's thoughts are, and then we'll go around and, and give our uh, uh, opinion. Um but this was the poll. Uh so um oh one sec. Um, it says, now that Leeds has secured the goalkeeper, which signing do you think is most important? So quality cent- central defender, now that Vorba's leaving, or a right-sided centre-back, is Creswell ready to be number one choice? You've got creative midfielder, so number 10 if you like, clinical striker, and obviously a left-back, so we don't have one at the football club. So, listen, over 2,500 votes and 64.6% say clinical striker. I understand that. I do understand that um as a as a starting point. But uh let's let's go around the houses uh and, and find out what, what people's thoughts are. We'll mix it up a bit. We'll come to you first of all, Lockie. Um which position do you because the reason I put them in because I expect leads to acquire each one of them positions. Because every a lot of people went, well, we need them all. And I went, no, I get that. I asked you which one was next. Like, which one's right. the most important? Yeah. Can we go into a season without a number nine? Can we go into the season without a left back and get that towards the back end of the window? So for you, you're in the boardroom. Right. Which position do we go after next, Lockie? Like, where, where's your head at? So the way I look at it, I look at the players in a Daniel Farker system. And the striker is a player from what I've seen, who tends to need people to create for them, to give them that opportunity. Now, we need that striker, obviously, but we also need the person who can give them the chances. So it's quite it's quite a tough one. But for me, it's between attacking midfielder, the number 10, and the striker, because you need both and they work hand in hand with each other. But I just... I, I do think if we keep the likes of... You know, say, say we keep Sinistera, we keep... We keep Georgina Ruta, we keep Somerville, Nonto, they're here. They're, that's great. And a lot of them can rotate that's that forward position, but we don't have a different profile that can create chances through ball progression in terms of having that pass. We don't have that player. We also don't have a goal scorer, right? But the goal scorer will only have the ball if we have that number 10, because that number 10 is vital. And I mean, vital in creating 
chances for the striker. It's not like the striker is a guy who goes in the build-up. For me, they don't in the Farker system. The striker mm-hmm. doesn't get involved much in the build-up, really. Um, so you need to have... If Timo Pukki didn't have the players behind him, he wouldn't have scored the goals he did at all. He wouldn't have got yeah. anywhere near it because he's not going to get the ball. He's mm-hmm. on the end of it. So you need people who can give him the ball and create chances to give him the ball. You looked yeah. at the game at the weekend. Uh, there was a lot of good running. There was a lot of good movement from the likes of you know Dan James and Somerville. A lot of good movement in there, but there weren't that pass. That's why we didn't clear. We didn't create one clear one v one chance. Not one when in areas we should have done, if we'd have had that nous in that 10 role, that real technical player who can pass a really good ball through the defenders and mm. understands the striker's movement, we could have got two or three against Monaco, right? Now, yeah. and you put that on the striker end, if you have that guy in the 10 and the striker is, for example, you know, you have Rooster up there or you have Nons up there, it's likely that the chance is that easy, they will finish it regardless, if that makes sense. Mm. So... It is a tough one between striker and attacking midfielder, but I just think, given the build-up as well, you've got to think about the build-up, how we get in the ball to the striker from defence, that number 10 in the build-up is vital. So I'd go with number 10. But both are very important. If you if you could pick one, who would who would you go for? Who would be your number 10? Ooh, off the top of my head. Oh, you know, I don't know. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. I'm trying to think of some names. There's... I'll let you sit on it, bro. Don't worry. Yeah, let me sit on it. Let me sit on it. I'll come back. Let you sit on it. I'll let you do some research. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that. Sorry. (laughs) Yeah, get back to the list. Come on now. (laughs) Um, I'll come. I'll come to you, Lloyd. Next. Um, For you, like, which is the most pivotal? Do you think? And obviously, try like whatever your head was. Don't let anything anyone else dissuade you. Come and uh, what? What's your thoughts? Number nine, mate. Um, yeah, playing a bit of a uh, devil's advocate to what uh, Lockie just said. I feel like even if we got a number ten in, I, we haven't got no. I just can't see who's going to be that person to to, yeah. to take these chances that the number ten is helping create. Um, Bamford, it's just Bamford. I'm not going to go into that. And uh, Rutter is definitely better out wide. So I just want it. Just make me feel so much more confident going into the season with someone who I know will score 20, 25 goals. Yeah. And um, we do need a left back, but um, well, like you said, we need all those positions. But I feel like we can get by it in August with with um, Helder and maybe Byram sort of taking up that position. But mm. I just, at the moment, I, I, we, I, I think we're crying out for a number nine. And I'm, I reckon the, the 49ers and Farquhar will be like, that That would be their next next sign. The marquee. The marquee yeah. one. I think that would be done before Cardiff as well. Yeah, well, I, I found the name, up. Joe. Go on, mate. Uh, people say Elias Chair or Oscar yeah. Bob. They're the two. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Perfect. They would nice. be. Yeah. Oscar Bob. And uh, I've seen Borges might be on his way to West Ham. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that. Um, Lucky, what do you think about Fleming Mirwall? Hmm. That's a good one. Is he any more of a goal scorer, though, from that 10 roll? Yeah. Yeah. They can mm. also be adapted for me. Mm. Like st- a bit like Stephen Manina from Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That could <laughs> be one. That's a good shout. And that's a good shout. That's a good shout. There's definitely options. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there is. Let's go get one from Germany that none of us have heard of eh? and just watch it wide open. Like Buendia. Like Buendia though. Buendia yeah, yeah. came in and he, he just lit it up, didn't he? So there. Um Lloyd, who, who's your striker? I'm guessing it's Joel, right? Joel Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've been, been watching... Yeah. I know we say not to watch YouTube clips, but I watched um, every one of his goals for Swansea earlier. He's, he's just brilliant. <laughs> he is. He's really good. Potent, were you trying to, try to emulate him on uh, when you were playing at left-back? At yeah, earlier. fingers <laughs> are training tonight. Outside the box, headed goals. I think he just looks brilliant. And if the fee of 15 million is, is accurate, then... Yeah, I just think just go and get it done, like like now. But yeah, was, time will tell with that. There was talk of it being twenty, and now it's gone down to Dropped fifteen, hasn't yeah. it? So it's uh, maybe coming a little bit closer to what. I know, I'm seeing here, mate. Uh, he's going to the prem on the Fred guys. Yeah, <laughs> so it looks that way. It? Yeah, it looks. It definitely looks that way. Um, right, Andrea, you're up, mate. What's your position? 
from where well, do you come uh, from? I, I agree with Loki. I think the number ten, but uh, realistically, yeah, okay. and uh, I voted uh, in the poll. I voted striker because uh, okay. I agree. We need the number ten, but right now there's a congestion in that specific area of of wingers that can be adapted. We can be adapting in that role. So before. We got a number thing. I, I sense that we need to offload. Of course, they're not going to stay all of them. You know, onto Somerville, uh, Sinisterra, Harrison, Poveda, Costa, Gerard, Greenwood. We are, there's so many players that are not, not going to stay all of them. So right now, like we see in the friendly, Somerville is playing in the number 10 position. And uh, also there's other players who can be adapted in preseason. So right now, if you look at the striker position, we just have Bamford as a pure striker. And Rotor is not a number nine, and we're playing in there because he's adopted. But yeah. of course, Keller, Keller can play there too. But I'm talking about a physical goal scoring and versatile number number nine. And we don't have one like one like that right now. Uh, of course, Pyro can be an option. Uh, we need to see how it fits the system, to be fair, like we said multiple times. <laughs> But uh, yeah, right now I think uh, we're not we're not looking like scoring because we have lack of mm. consistency in the final third. So especially we don't have a proper number nine. I think that it needs to be sorted days up because yeah. we have a, a friendly against Forest and one against Arts, and then of course the season is approaching. Season, and we, right? we need to, yeah, exactly. We need to wow. we need to bring in one because we need to start to build the glue, you know, the and the connection with the, the other the other players, of course, and and fit him in the system. Otherwise, we'll. If we bring in a, a number nine, uh, uh, when the season is started, it, it needs time to adjust to the to, oh, yeah. to the new team, to the system, and basically, is uh, adaptation, is um, acclimation time. You know, it will be during the season. And it's not ideal to start the season with the number nine, not not roll again. I recently watched the Peter Crouch documentary in our Prime. It's like that, you know, when he moved to, to Liverpool. I look how, how long it did it take for him to? Who's this? Sorry. <laughs> I watched the, the Peter Crouch documentary on. All right, Prime. okay, yeah, yeah. And I, I, it shows how much he, it took to him to, to adapt to, to Liverpool's style of play, you know, before uh, getting uh, adapted to, to Benitez one and, and start scoring goals for fun, you know. So, yeah, I think the number one should come first just because we have too many wingers we can play right now, also in the number 10 position. Otherwise, if, if we won't have so many wingers of the club, I, I'd say the number 10, of course. Yeah. I think, yeah, it's, it's quite. A, a, the, whoever's laying on the goals for the striker, they need to know which movements he's going to make, when he's going to go, when he's not. Do you know what I mean? And, and it's like you speak, you need to have that cohesion. So I hear you about getting him in. On the wingers, Ice Ice Bailey agrees. He says, We have so many wingers. Maybe we could see if we can play it on a circle. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jamie says, A number 10 is most important for me. But if we yeah. wait any longer, the opportunity of getting Pirro is gone. We need Pirro ASAP. I don't know about opportunity gone, mate. I don't who's in there. I don't know. I don't know. Um, we hear a lot of things, um, so we'll have to wait and see, I guess. But yeah, I think for me, I think it's the same, really. It's a toss up between the pair, yeah. isn't it? Because you, we were saying off air, and I've said it so many times, and I'm sick to the back teeth now of this team not having players in the correct fecking positions. Right, because it, it 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 was okay under Bielsa for a period of time because the guy worked water, you know, turned water into wine. Mm. It's ultimately what happened. But as soon as he went, it went to shit. And and the players, I mean, no, even when he was when he was there playing Dan James as a nine, all this sort of stuff, it just was it was minging. And I just think we need to see players in the correct position. So we need to go out and get. And I suppose we've got a number nine in Bamford, but unfortunately, he's just got no he's got no grace, grace period anymore with the fans. And if he starts that game against Cardiff, which I, I don't think he will because in both friendlies, he started rotter first. But if he starts that game against Cardiff and he misses a chance within the first 20 minutes, it's fun. the job's fucked. Yeah. Your season's yeah. writ off, Patrick. It is true, though. Yeah. His head will go because he's a massive confidence player. The fans' heads will go, and it'll, it's just not the right environment. So he needs to be second striker, off the bench, whatever. Um, you know, throw him in the mix, roll of the dice kind of vibe because he's not going anywhere. But we need a proper number nine, and we do need someone to lay on them chances because as good as Somerville was or people like, you know, we, we just need a proper creative force in there, someone that's going to the link. Um I think the most important, though, I'd have to say nine. I do have to say nine right now, just because 
we need a fucking goal scorer. I don't want to see James playing there. I can already see, as a fan watching it, Rutter's already frustrating me playing there because mm-hmm. you can see when he does drift out to the left what he can do. So And Farker already earmarked him as that position. So Farker knows he's better in that position. So he's playing him through the middle because he has to because we don't have a striker right now. But as long as it's not Yusuf Poulsen because he's Champions League Patrick Bamford, basically. Um, do you know what I mean? Though? He's just a Champions League Patrick Bamford. So it's pointless. Um, go out and get someone who's who's going to who's gonna score us, like Lloyd says, 20, 30 goals. That's what we need right now. And that's what I want, you know. Um, and it'd be nice for Leeds to go out and get big signing like Ampadu, a top championship level goalkeeper in 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 Darlow, and then to go out and go get the best championship striker. And I'd be like, look at it, I think, do you know what? This we mean business. We mean business. So I'll have to wait and see. Um yeah. what I do just want to finish up on, um which is the article which was uh, put together. Yeah. Uh, earlier on, it was in the Mail Online. It was put together by Mike Keegan. Um, and it was, I guess, like a week in the life, a day in the life of uh, of the 49ers since they've taken over. And there's, there's some amazing stuff in there. We were we were chatting about it off air, uh, not least about uh, changes to the ground, etc. cetera. Um, do you want to take us off, Andre, with some of the main talking points, you know, f- from the article? And, and, and yeah, a few people tagged me in it and said, this is such a great read. Yeah, it's a very good article, very good, uh, you know, inside article, let's say. Uh, let's call it like that. Because, yeah, of yeah, course, it, it, it says that explains what, that the, the plans for the expansion are already underway. That Peter Lowe is, um, of course, in talks with the city council in order to... Uh, know what to do about uh, the land near Island Road, of course, because it's like a cathedral right now in the desert for Island Road. It's just the stadium, which, of course, we all have affection to it, but it's it's old. It's an old stadium. Let, let, let's, be, let's be clear, and it's redeveloping. It's uh, refreshing to see that the 49ers uh, want to stay at Island Road and redevelop Island Road for me and not move away. Because uh, many clubs moving into another stadium have lost their soul. It won't happen with Leeds if, if that's the case, but I think Leeds' uh, natural home is an on road and see that they were willing to invest 200, uh, 200 million, you know, to for that project and l- look at what they did with uh, the new Leeward Stadium, you know, in uh, in California for the 49ers is a great uh, a great example of what they're capable of, of course. Uh, and also there's talks about the um, the developing and the improvement of uh, transportation uh, near the stadium, because of course. Right now, it's based basically on buses and taxis, uh, of course, especially. And yeah, exactly this one. The 20 acres surrounding the ground and got it for so long will be put to good use in coming years, especially. And another thing that stood out for me is also the fact that they explained that the, the situation that the club was in, you know, in the, we had on match day half the staff of, uh, compared to Brighton, for example, a club of the size of Leeds. And uh, let's just explain that, um, that basically the, um, the manager, especially the, um, the ground manager, also was working as a, 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 the IT guy. And, uh, this is the, the, the I have to manager. come in on this, bro. I <laughs> yeah. have to come in on this, Andrea. Right? Yeah, John, I, John, didn't, yeah. I, I, I didn't know, right? And, and everybody, <laughs> we, we have to get on this, right? Because remember, I've spoken to you so many times that this club was a club that that was Premier League in status, but League One behind the scenes. Now, this here in this paragraph, what I've got highlighted here, where it says, staffing levels at Leeds United, one of the biggest names of English football, had half the number of workers of Brighton, okay? And then the next bit, the stadium manager not only also looked after the training ground, but he also tripled up as the director of IT. Like, (laughs) what is going on here? Triple threat, like in the US. Triple threat. Oh, yeah. Really good <laughs> job interview that guy must have. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, can you imagine that? So not only did he look after Ellen Road and Four Parch, he also tripled up as the director of IT. <laughs> it is embarrassing. 
That is embarrassing, genuinely. And like I said, I, I said to you before we went online, you know, it, it's like the Stuart Dallas on Van Road. He does every role, you know, of the end of the scenes. So, linking up to that, also the the article they say that the club before the 49ers jump jumped on and, and get the and got the the full ownership was like run in a, on a week to week basis. And right now yes, they feel yeah. that inside the club, there's that now a long term project when mm. everyone has specific goals. Uh, in terms of not week to week, but years, it's mm. a clear project. And the the one the first thing that Parag wanted to do was to meet all the empl employees at Allen Road, and he, um, he pointed out the the whole plan to them. And after he finished his speech, he said, "Does everyone have, uh, has something to to say to me?" And one of the employees uh, shouted at him in a in a friendly way, of course, "Don't you dare to change the name of the stadium!" And he said, "I won't. I won't, I won't do that." At all, yeah. I want to do that at all, and also remember, and also tell us if we are, are acting like a standard American ownership, because they really want to, uh, of course, understand and develop the club, but uh, with a let's say Yorkshire mentality, in mm -hmm. accordance with the Yorkshire mentality and the involvement of the Peacock in the in the photo shoot and uh, in the recent, of course, in the new show too. Uh, also, the, it shows that they want to. Um, you know, to to cherish, to take under consideration still the um, the origins and uh, the identity of the club, and for me that that is very is very good. And also, you know, if we develop the land near Land Road, like it was in the 70s, you know, when the first team train behind the West Stand, I think it'll it'll be it'll be good for the World Club because maybe you can build the training ground yeah. there and move away from Tor Arch. And the used store parts like Juve, for example, in Italy, they have built the, um, the new training ground called La Continassa near the Juventus Stadium. And the first team trained there, while the youth teams and the women's team trained in their old training ground at, uh, at Vinovo. Also Liverpool, for example, uh, they are now uh, reusing and redeveloping their old training ground for the women's team specifically. So uh, sometimes we forgot about the women's team too, I think. Uh, also, a, the new structures and, and facilities around the stadium, uh, in order to be like a, something like the Etihad, you know, like the data Etihad that can can benefit also the under 23s because they play in York right now, and uh, the women's team because of course I think also the, the the women's team should be considered and they have a plan for it too because uh, they surely know coming from a country where the NWSL is the best uh, league in the world, how the WSL is developing. And I think that the ultimate goal in the future will be to, to, to get the, the club there, you know, the, from, the, from the women's side. And uh, yeah, another thing that stood out to me and in order to finish my, 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 my old fog on the article was also the fact that he, he points out that Fake, um, when he went to, to do the interview in London with them, he, he arrived there and uh, spoke to them, not just about his plan to uh, get out of the championship, but also his plan to establish the club in the Premier League. So he explained, this is what I'm, I'm, I want to do in the championship. I have won it twice, but I'm, I don't want to be looked at just like yeah. a manager who has won it twice. I want to be looked at now as a manager who can do it in the Premier League. Because of course, that's this conception. He, did, he didn't do it in the Premier League at Norwich. And this is important because it's, it's directly connected for me to what Parag said about him when he said uh, in his interview that, of course, if uh, we get to the Premier League, Farke will have all his tools at his disposal to establish in the Premier League. It's, it's directly connected to this one. So it's a very refreshing article. When done, Mike Keegan, good article. And it's refreshing also to see that they are willing to connect and establish a legacy, you know, a process. Uh, and that's what I've written in a tweet, you know, trust the process, uh, a phrase very much used in the American sports, but we need to trust the process really, because I think uh, they they move slowly sometimes, but slowly doesn't mean badly. It means that they uh, are uh, they have a plan and they want to take all the necessary steps to uh, get to the, to the specific goal of this plan. So I trust them, of course. And right now that they take over has gone through, I think, the like we've seen with Ampon and Darlo, it might it might take some time because of course they have inherited a, a bad situation left behind by Rads and Orta. But once they have cleared out all that was left behind, all of the things that were left behind, I think they will they will get us to to where where we need we deserve to be, you know. Yeah, and the bit I liked about that, Andrea, was the bit just below where Joe's highlighted where 
uh, Parag actually asked to meet the players and the manager. Yes. But Fark told him, you can, but in my time. Um, yeah. where, where it says that um, and people cringed at that. But Parag loved it. And that's yeah. what I like. You know, yeah. uh, I think that's the fact that Daniel Farker is not a yes man. He's told them, he said, yeah, you can, but this is my team and we'll do it in my time when we're ready. Yeah. And Parag liked that because he knows, you know, that's what he wants in a manager. He wants a manager to put his foot down and, you know, and I like the training bit just below there. <laughs> Incredible focus yeah. on fitness. And it's yeah. level they have not seen since Bielsa. <laughs> the yeah, scrap is Bielsa, you know, with love. Bielsa with love. <laughs> exactly. And you know what, Lock, you think it's what you said about the, the, this one that he, went, he, he didn't permit it to him to, to meet the players, but you know, you have to, to do it in my time. Yeah. It's something very much American, you know, I think yeah. because the manager is like a, a, it's not an employee like it was recently when we had uh, mm -hmm. Marsh, who was, I'm sorry to say, but a yes man to the ownership, uh, specifically to, to Orta. It's, it's very different because the manager is involved in every aspect of the club. Yeah. And, and this is crucial because we've seen with Bielsa, our manager involved specifically in the club. And Radrizani said it too in his interview, he transformed the club. Right now, we are a broken club. We are a broken mm. club because Bielsa had built a legacy and the legacy, this legacy was uh, destroyed uh, by what happened in the, in the next few years. And we've seen, like we were talking about before, you know, about the players that have been uh, touched by that, like Strauch and Melia. We, we've seen the, the, the drop in form and especially Strauch played out of position too. We need to rebuild that legacy. And uh, yeah. I really like doing small steps behind the scenes in order to make all the employees at the road feel important and feel the same because it's a whole mm. structure, you know. Um, when the things are going well on the pitch, or, 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 uh, um, in, um, in, in various cases, it's also because the things are going very well and well planned behind the scenes. Uh, if you play well and uh, the things are, aren't going great, and you get the results on the pitch, but the things aren't going great behind the scenes, I think you can... Uh, do well for one year, but you get caught out because uh, eventually the difficulties behind the scenes uh, transfer to the to the yeah. sporting side too for me. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I think, listen, it's exciting times. I know we'd all like a little bit more business, and it, we'd also like it to be a little bit quicker. But it's clear that the Forty Niners are, are willing to wait it out to ensure they get the best deal for the football club, and it looks like they'll have done that with uh, Carl Darlow as well. Probably expecting to be announced maybe tomorrow, Thursday. We've got a game. I will be doing a watch along. Um, I'm going out with some friends tomorrow, um, so I don't know what will happen tomorrow, um, but we'll wait and see. Um, but yeah, um, I'll definitely be there Thursday anyway for the watch along. So make sure you join me for that record record numbers um against monaco so oh, uh yeah well amazing um, yeah well thank done. you mate amazing yes. to see long may it continue long may yeah. it continue um yeah look happy apart from the <laughs> it's it's actually laughable now isn't it the fact that the guy was doing three jobs at once it <laughs> stadium manager and yeah it's just class uh yorkshire dave's become a member big up to yorkshire dave i hope you're doing well mate thank you oh listen i passed the I passed a hundred memberships as well. I actually got wow. a notification to say Congrats. you with uh, nice one. A hundred memberships, which Can is I just insane. say one thing before we go? Go, mate. Right. Go. I just want to quickly talk about the whole community and making Leeds part of the city. And from from yes. reading the article, that is what is at the forefront off the pitch. You know, creating that 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 connection system, that travel system between the actual city centre and the yeah. stadium, and building a hub around that will connect people much quicker, it'd be much easier to get well on road, it'd be more, you know, affordable to get to on road and mm. just easier. And that makes makes it a much better thing. You know, the Etihad, I live near it, is it's so easy to get to the Etihad in the city centre. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and yeah, that it's a really good yeah. thing they're doing in my opinion. And they were really talking about a tube too, a tube system too. Yeah. Either tram or tube would be really good. You can do yeah. a, maybe a, a tube like Bradford, Leeds and Huddersfield maybe. Like yeah, yeah. Sunderland and Newcastle, Lieutenant World Metro. Yeah, um, I've got a thing as well, folks. Uh, just to, just before we head off, um, I've got an exciting giveaway coming up as well. So I've been speaking to football prizes. There's the opportunity to win, and I don't know how relevant and how long this will be worth anything. But I've got a Willie Nonto signed Leeds United shirt coming um, to give away as a giveaway. Um, so I'm thinking something like subscribe to me, follow football prizes, and you can enter the draw. Um, so that's coming. So that's exciting. Um, so if you want to get involved on that, keep your eyes peeled on the channel and we'll put something together. 
I'm lucky enough to get one myself and then one to give away. So that's quite nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, yeah, so so that'll be cool. But listen, in a month's time, it might not be worth Jack and I'll be burning <laughs> it live. I'll be burning it live on stream. Yeah, in a few uh, years, Joe, it might be worth a lot of money if, you know. Yeah, well true, career, true. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah, that is true. That is true. But we'll... Uh, We'll do that. We'll do that. Um, yeah, Andrea. Before we be head off, let's uh, let's have a quick chat about uh, Creswell. Creswell obviously did an interview with the BBC. Was pretty coy on his uh, on his uh, contract situation, wasn't he? So, um, what what seems to be the deal there? Are we confident he's going to stay? Well, for for me, he's going to stay eventually in the end uh, mm. because uh, of course they they asked him about his contract, but of course, like every other player, right now he didn't want to. Uh, you know, to, to dig into that situation, maybe because right now the agents instruct the players to don't speak about contact situation openly, you know, but uh, if you listen to the whole interview, I think it's good because it, it shows you a player that he says that it, its dream was to, to, to be with Leeds because of, and, and it sounds like someone that wants to play a big, play a big part in the, um, in the coming season, you know. And yeah, I like I said in the past, um, for me, it's not ready yet to be the first choice as a direct centre back for me, because uh, um, he, he still needs to be. Of course, he played at Millwall. He had some appearances in the Premier League. I remember especially his first one against West Ham when it was really good, and we, we dominated them but lost the game <laughs> with the the last minute, you know. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, looking at him right now, just because of the system, you know, because uh, the, the centre-backs need to be quick with their feet. And sometimes he's, he's still slow with, to, to make, uh, to, with his decision-making. You know, he's good with his tackle and uh, his air ability, of course, because he's physically strong. But for me, he might start as an understudy to a um, more experienced defender in front of him. But, uh, you know, like what Strack did under Bielsa, you know, of course, he started as a young player, then as a backup, and then walked into the team and uh, retained his place into the team in the first season. I think his trajectory should be like that. And, uh, of course, he's lead because, uh, just because of uh, what his father, his father played for the club, played for the club, of course, Richard. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, it sounds like someone that wants to stay, but wants some assurances. Yeah. But which, right is now, fair, which is fair, bro. Which is fair, of course. England under 21 internationally, they've just won the Euros. If you look at some of the names in that team, they're playing for top Premier League clubs. Yeah. He's probably thinking, you know what? And and the thing is, his agent and Charlie himself would have had a lot of interest, bro. Yeah, you know, they've been chasing. I remember, sorry, just to, I remember going to a live a Leeds uh, Leeds event um, for LS11. Actually, it was live, and they had Andy Hughes on. And Andy Hughes was chatting and he said at the time that City were tracking him. And this was years before he, you know, actually broke on. He said, this kid's going to be next level. He's well thought of. He loves Leeds. He's you know, and the fact is, if he's not getting game time and the R club's coming for him, then, he, you know, I can't yeah. blame the lad for wanting to. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Honest, but you know? for me, he's, he, he, the best for his career right now for me, because he can be a... Uh, an established player for Leeds for many years is to start yeah. as, an under, well, as an understudy. Then maybe, of course, is uh, more than 40 games, the championship uh, and also the League Cup and FA Cup. He left his chances during the season. And if yeah. he plays well, he can be the starter. Good but play. he needs, yeah. he needs, he needs yeah. to earn that spot for me right yeah, now. Because, of course, uh, and Mewley was good. Which so is also Emily. fair enough as well, isn't it? Yeah, you exactly. know, both yeah. ways. Yeah. Exactly. But so... so yeah, yeah, go, go, Joe. I finished. No, I was going to say, like, obviously, the names that we've been linked to have ended up coming through. Apart from Ampadu, we didn't know, but Cal Darlow looks to be one that we've mentioned. I still think we're getting Phillips as well. I still yeah. think we're getting that Phillips just because he's gone nowhere. He's gone nowhere. So you give me Rodon, lad. Give me Rodon. I'll give you Joe Rodon. <laughs> Let's do what we always do, actually. Um, <laughs> Let's go around the late night Leeds crew. Who is. Um, which position we've all given what position we think or we'd like next? Me nine, Lloyd nine, uh, Andrea nine, and Lockie uh, ten. But let's actually think what we think will be the position and when will the signing come in? And you're not allowed Darlow. 
because that's going to happen in the next <laughs> 48 it. hours or so, right? Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go first, and I think it will be Nat Phillips, and I will think it, uh, I think it'll be centre back. You're allowed the same, bro. Right. And um, I think it'll be done before Hearts, but he won't play any part at Hearts. I think, and yeah, it'll be maybe late on or something. That's what I think. Um, go on then, Lockie. You go next, mate. You know what? I'm going to be different. Why not? Yeah. I'm going to say Kamara. Okay. Why not? I was going to say Phillips, but you said him, so we'll switch it up. We'll have a bit of... Yeah, Kamara. I think we'll get Kamara in this week. Nice. At the end nice. of the week. Go on, Lloyd. I think, I think we're going to get Pro in. I do. Monday, oh, yeah. Tuesday. I think that'll be done. Well, the bid done and accepted. I think, wow. I think we will. That would be nice, bro. What a great start to the week that would be. Listen, we've only got, by the way, we've only got 12 days left. 12 yeah. days. <laughs> and in that time, we're going to play two more times. You know what I mean? So it's, it's soon coming. Mm -hmm. uh, Andrea, what say you? Yeah, uh, like, like I said, the chess, the chess match, you know, one piece goes out and another piece com comes in. So uh, I think by the end of the week, Robert will will move and will uh, bring in another centre-back. And I think it's going to be Phillips, but I really want Joe Roden. Please give me Joe Roden. <laughs> <laughs> because he's been from frozen out of the of the spot squad. He, he he wasn't renewed and they had an option to buy a trend. He didn't play much games in the Premier League. He was great, he was once in the championship. So uh, I, I, if we're willing to spend eight millions, maybe for Phillips, I think we should look to spend nine or ten for Roden. Because he's a better player for me in my in my. Andrea, you, I like Rodham. you were the only one who said about Ampadu. You, the only <laughs> the only t person I heard it from was you. So yeah. watch us sign, sign him now it. over the weekend, Rodham. Yeah, Rodham and <laughs> Puyampalo. Rodham and Puyampalo. <laughs> Imagine it. That be it. You will be getting a scouting job if that yeah. happens. Um, yeah, definitely. Right, folks. Thanks as always for watching Late Night Leads. Listen, we had over. 1,100 people in tonight, and we've still got that now. So that's absolutely amazing. So make sure you go on over and show love uh, to Lloyd at Let's Talk Leeds United, to Lockie at Lockie Leeds, and, of course, Andrea over on Twitter. Um, yes, let me just uh, put this up as well. Yeah, uh, exactly. In peace. Yeah, uh, to Trevor Francis and Chris oh, yeah. Hart Williams, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah. Many respects to them. I know Dor on tour was quite uh, quite close to Chris. I was supposed to be doing a video with him tonight, but he had to pull it because he's sitting quite hard. So I just want to send my love over to Dor and also to Dave as well. And all Forest fans, yourself included, Nick, I know you watch regularly. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you check everyone out and uh, we'll see you again very soon for another one of these. Um, like I say, game on Thursday. So if you don't see me tomorrow, you'll definitely see me on Thursday and uh, we'll see you in a bit. Peace out.